In this video, I will show you how to find the p-value in a hypothesis test. So what one does need to know in order to be able to find the p-value in a hypothesis test? First of all, you have to know the type of the distribution involved. It can be one of the following four, z, t, chi-square, or f. Next, you will need to know the type of the test, such as whether it is a right-tail, left-tail, or two-tail procedure. And finally, you have to know the value of a test statistic for which you will be computing the p-value. And luckily, the test statistics are usually labeled using the lower case, the name of the distribution, and the subscript 0. That is, in this case, the test statistics are normally labeled as z sub 0, t sub 0, chi squared sub 0, or f sub 0. After watching this video, you will be able to answer the following questions. Notice how the type of the procedure, the distribution, and the test statistic can be easily identified in every one of them. In step 1, you'll have to draw the probability density curve of the test statistics uh, distribution. Uh, luckily, there are only a few distributions involved, and we usually label the test statistic using the lowercase of the name of the distribution. So that means if you have a um, test statistic labeled Z0, that means Z distribution is used. If a test statistic is labeled T0, that means the T distribution is used. If your test statistic is labeled chi-squared 0, then the chi-squared distribution is used. And finally, if your test statistic is labeled as F0, then F distribution is used. If you have a Z distribution, then you will have to sketch the standard normal probability density curve, that is the one with the mean 0 and standard deviation 1. If you have a t-distribution, then using the number of degrees of freedom, you can also sketch the t-curve. For chi-squared curve, you also need to know the degrees of freedom. This is a right-skewed curve, so as the f-curve. Uh, however, to sketch the f-curve, you will need to know two degrees of freedom, the degrees of freedom in the numerator and the degrees of freedom in the denominator labeled DFN and DFD. In this video, I'm going to use some generic distribution X um, with some generic test statistic lowercase x sub zero and some generic probability density curve. After you sketch the probability density curve, then you will have to draw the region uh, associated with the p-value according to the type of the test. Therefore, in a right tail test, you will be drawing the region in the right tail of the distribution. In a left tail test, you will be drawing the region in the left tail of the distribution. And in a two tail test, you will be drawing the regions in both tails of the distribution. Next, we will place the test statistic on the horizontal axis and label the area according to the type of the procedure. In the right-tail test, we place the test statistic in the right side of the region, and the area to the right of the test statistic is labeled as P. This is the p-value. Um, in the left-tail procedure, we place the test statistic in the left side of the spectrum, and we label the area to the left of the test statistic as p. This is the p-value. In a two-tail procedure, without being given a specific numbers, it's really hard to tell whether your test statistic will place in the left or the right side of the spectrum. But either way, the total area of the region is equal to p. This is the p-value. So the area of each tail is equal to half of p. Finally, we can use the created diagram to compute the p-value. In the right tail procedure, we find the p-value as the area to the right of the test statistic. In the left tail procedure, we find the p-value as the area to the left of the test statistic. In a two-tail procedure, when the test statistic places in the left side of the spectrum, we find the area to the left of the test statistic, which gives us only half of the p-value. 
and then we multiply both sides by p to produce the p value. Finally, in a two tail test, when the test statistic places on the right side of the spectrum, we find the area to the right of the test statistic, and that gives us only half of the p value, and then we multiply both sides by 2 to get the p value. In summary, to find the p value in a hypothesis test, we first draw the probability density curve of the test statistics distribution, then we draw the p value region according to the type of the test. We then label the areas and place the test statistic on the horizontal axis, and then we compute the p value. In order for us to be able to find the p value, we must know the type of the distribution, the type of the test, and the test statistic.